Most evenings, the wind dies down until about mid-morning, and it's calm, and it's unusually calm here in the marina. There are a few boats, some are under quarantine waiting in the bay, and I'm sure others will be coming down from the Canaries to stop after a grueling seven-day voyage. They'd rest up, refuel, repair and restock to continue the voyage across the Atlantic. They would visit the city, hit the bars and restaurants. They'd buy souvenirs and parts and chill out the marina's floating bar. They'd provide much needed work to the people of Mindelo, who've depended on passing ships for centuries. They'd also understand the wind that sweeps across Mindelo Bay. And speaking of wind, we're splitting up mooring lines between Christophe, Jean, me and a few other sailors. Wind was gusting up to about 45 knots. Then all of a sudden, boats started bashing into the pontoon. All hands were on deck. One of the mooring chains gave in under the stress of the wind. Several buoys were affected and it was mayhem until the crew moved a few boats then secured the situation. They had to move one more boat. It was time to move this boat. I got some filming help from Edder here. As I said, the wind dies down in the morning. So we can move this boat, which belongs to my Swiss friend Jean. It's ferro cement and apparently weighs too much for these moorings. As well, his motor has died too. So the crew had to tow and tug it with working dinghies. 20 knots wind gusts would make the move just that more difficult. Tuga here heads the crew and manages the marina. It's constant work here, even with a few boats, as there is always lots of wind. We're helped by Clayton, Stephen and Brock, who also do pontoon repairs, as well as dive to repair the underwater structure. For them, it's just another day at the office. The state of emergency had been lifted and me and Paige wanted to go out and sail with Cape Verdean friends. And to sail with Cape Verdeans, you need to get special permission from the Maritime Police and then from the Port Authority. The Port Authority requests a copy of identification for all Cape Verdean passengers. That meant I had to wait for four people to get me the copies of their ID. It took a few days, which gave me time to repair the two holes in my hull. They were caused when one of my mooring lines broke. I had to fill the holes with epoxy and let it dry for 48 hours. Sand it down and drill new holes, a challenge in the wind and waves. Nothing is ever easy to repair on a boat, especially when everything is constantly moving. tossed my dinghy upside down to dry off the growing algae. I had just cleaned it and it was growing again. All my tools are arranged in a starboard aft cabin under a small workspace. A recommend for any full-time liverbird sailor to keep their tools organized and easily accessed. It's not a pretty job, but effective. It had to be done, and it's how people get in and out of Galapan. And water could be coming in. I put away my extra mooring line, now time to get my sailing authorization. So we got permission to sail. 
and we're gonna go out for a little day afternoon trip to check out the boat test everything out me and my pesh and we're waiting for Lily I don't know if she'll show up I don't know if you can depend on those Cape Verdean girls unless it's party time but let's see so first time out in a while since quarantine at the end of quarantine as they say here the end of lockdown me and Pesh were off to test out Galapan. He doesn't need permission, as he is now a licensed professional sailor. We had to make a rum drop off to old friends. One of my Canadian buddies I met here a few months ago, Peter, had sailed down from the Canaries with his son and was under quarantine and was thirsty for rum. And then, Me, Mom, Pish. That means me and Pish. Just us testing out the boat. Been a long time. We we're gonna go with some girls, but it's a good thing they didn't come because it's fucking wild out here, man, as usual. And we love it. Yeah, we're going upwind a bit, forcing it, going by the island here. Wow, man, it's crazy as usual. Whoa, look at that. This is the San Vicente Canal, a stretch of about 15 nautical miles of pure, crisp, full-fledged Atlantic fury. I've crossed this canal many times, and it's more or less like this all the time. Correction, it's almost always rougher than predicted, like today. Me and Pesh needed this short reality check. Test out your managing skills. We discussed tacking over jibing. Attack is less risky in these conditions. Nonetheless, it's also a wake-up call after not practicing for several weeks.
Both me and Paige are getting a serious workout. We'll be sore tonight, but man, now we're cruising, doing over seven knots downwind. Have you ever experienced mind or body altering medicinal aids? Well, this is my favorite medicine for mind and body. This is the ultimate high, man. Our little little test run. It was definitely something to to do. It's crazy windy. We didn't think it'd be this windy, but it is as usual. And we had a blast, man. That was a blast. Just me and Pesh, as they say here, me my boy. It's me and him. And it's a good thing the girls didn't come. I think that the gods, you know, warned us. Even. Wow. Even when I was raising the mainsail, the ring to the third reef got stuck and it was like Galvan telling me, just take three reefs, take, take three reefs. And I should have taken three reefs. It was crazy. I took two reefs and, uh, but we managed, man. We did good. A friggin' high, man. Woo! Woo! Oh, that was sap. so sap. Capa gaga. Skinny, not a villain, but a little boy.